Good evening. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. A bizarre and terrifying story today in the Chicago suburbs of Arlington Heights and Elk Grove Village. A 12-year-old girl and two men who were brothers are dead after taking poison capsules of extra-strength Tylenol. The fall of 1982, the Tylenol poisonings occurred. The first thing that popped into my head was, uh, how could this possibly have happened at our plant? A warning against the use of Tylenol. No one knew for days if the poison bottles were limited to Chicago. But even as the police and FBI began to search for clues, Jim Burke already had concluded that all Tylenol capsules, not just those in Chicago, but nationwide, should be recalled. Johnson & Johnson will no longer manufacture or sell any capsule products made directly available to the consumer. While this decision is a financial burden to us, it does not begin to compare to the loss suffered by the family and friends of Diane Ellsroth. On behalf of the entire Johnson & Johnson organization, I have expressed our heartfelt sympathy to Diane's family and loved ones. We asked James Burke, Chief Executive Officer at Johnson & Johnson, to let us watch behind the scenes as the story developed, and he agreed. Let me, let me take you through the logical sequence. Number one, this shows us very clearly the consumer was waiting to hear from us, and when, when she heard from us, she responded positively. Great. No question about it. So until we bring the third leg in, which is commercial television advertising, we're not using all the weapons available to us. What she is saying is that she, she, she needs reassurance and we're giving it to her. What she's saying is the most positive reassurance you give me is a tamper-resistant package and we're going to give it to her. And what she's saying in spite of that, and we have to track this as we go, is that deep down I'm concerned. Your, your conclusion is, since she's concerned, we ought to go out and sell her. There's nothing more offensive to me if I'm frightened than somebody tell me I ought to buy their product and I know I ought to buy it and I feel I ought to buy it, but I can't. Well, I got a lot of credit for that, but the fact is my job was made not only simple, but there wasn't anything else I could have done. Every person who worked for Johnson Johnson in the world was watching the poisonings. The Food and Drug Administration... You couldn't get off an airplane in any country in the world without having your baggage searched for Tylenol. If we had done anything other than what we did, think of how those employees would have felt. I mean, the very soul of the corporation was watching us. The other thing I did that I think helped was I decided to talk to the heads of news of all of the networks alone. And by the way, the lawyers hated the fact I was doing it because they didn't know what, what our obligations were legally. And they were very, very opposed to it, and, and Larry Foster was opposed. Everybody was opposed to it. Okay. I think that may have been Somebody intuitively one of the best things I did because I, I built a relationship with the heads of news and the networks. They called me uh, day and night uh, when they felt the need to. They didn't bother me. One network told me that 20% of their news for the first eight days. I had a... Uh, following the tampering was on this story. An implicit faith in the media. And I would not Which probably was been. somewhat unique. Because uh, most people don't. <laughs> Didn't then and less, less so now. But I had felt that as long as the public was at stake, the media would behave extremely well. And they did. Johnson & Johnson announced its new safety packaging. This package has three separate barriers to entry and affords the public the best protection we could reasonably devise. The outer box has glued flaps. Then there's a red seal, as you can see, around the outside, which uh, is the second barrier. Uh, and then that's, all right, look at that. And that's the third barrier, which is a... Thank you. Uh, this will obviously cause a rise in the price of the product. No, we're not going, we're going to absorb the price because we think it's good business too. We had to make uh, hundreds of decisions on the fly. I, hundreds of people made thousands of decisions. If you look back, we didn't make any bad decisions. Really, we really didn't. 
those thousands of decisions all had a splendid consistency about them, and that was that the public was going to be served first, because that's who was at stake. So the reason people talk about Tylenol when the Credo discussions come up is that the Credo ran that. Because the, the hearts and minds of the people who were Johnson & Johnson and who were making the decisions in a whole series of disparate companies, we, we organized every company in the United States to help solve the problem. They all knew what to do.